One of my passions besides photography is four-wheel driving and camping. The video that I'm editing here right now is actually for yet another YouTube channel all about camping and four-wheel driving, but we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later if you're a regular subscriber, big announcement coming soon. But this video, what I wanted to do, I'll show you this photo, this, this painting, painting, drawing almost. If you watch my live streams, you would have seen this in the background. This is a drawing that Sarah, my wife, had commissioned of my vehicle, the 76 Series Land Cruiser. Absolutely love that car. And this, this drawing has inspired what we're doing today in this video. I wanted to take a photo of the Land Cruiser at night, kind of combining the things that I really like and the things that you guys like as well. That's night photography. I'm gonna use the iPhone. We'll try maybe a different, couple of different things, but specifically light painting with some stars of the actual truck. Let's have a look. Where I've come out to is a back track, back road at the back of town and it's well away from traffic, it's well away from street lights and this is going to be cool. Tonight we're going to use the iPhone. I'm going to try a couple of different things to do the light painting on this vehicle. The way I've set it up is slightly across the road. The galactic core is not quite there but the tail of it's there. Which will give a little bit of you know, structure to the sky, but this is not about the sky, this is about the vehicle. It's all well and good to have a wonderful night sky in the image, but we want the car to be the champion of the shot. There are four things that we want to consider when we're going to take this sort of photo. We want to consider the focus, we want to consider the composition, the duration, and light. Light is the most important part. But even though light is the most important part, if the other parts kind of go to pudding, well, it's all gonna look like crap anyway. Firstly, with composition, I've parked the vehicle sort of across the road. You've gotta just play it safe wherever you are. If there's a lot of traffic, obviously you can't do that. But I could probably sit here all night and there won't be another car coming past here. It's a dirt road and it kind of suits the vehicle. So if your vehicle is a low riding sports car, a dirt road's probably not the go for you. You're gonna to need to find a bitumen track or asphalt track near where you are dark enough that other and, and remote enough that other vehicles aren't going to be impeded by what you're doing and I've parked the vehicle across the track but where it is as far as the night sky goes there's a little bit of the tail of the Milky Way or the galactic core and that's about it we don't want that to be the focus as I said before tonight I'm using the iPhone 14 Pro Max and this is going to work on any iPhone with a night mode to it it's not too much about the stars in this it's more about the technique that we're going to use. So it needs to be on a tripod, needs to be on a tri uh, phone, hol phone holder with a tripod, and that's about it. We're gonna shoot it horizontally because the vehicle is going to be across the photo. So what I'm doing here is I'm shining this light here, nice pencil beam, and I'm gonna move the tripod so the back of the vehicle is kind of to the right hand side of that third line, of the, of the, the third quadrant if you like, in the rule of thirds. I'm just going to lower that a little bit. Because I don't want that front wheel there to be touching the bottom of the frame. That's reasonably central. That headlight, because the vehicle's on an angle, and this is the angle that you want to park your vehicle, you don't want to put it straight on, head, head towards you, or directly side on. We want this angular texture about it. So that'll work. I think the headlight in the center of the frame, on the, almost on the rule of thirds on the bottom line there, I think that's going to work pretty well. Now that winter's over, the bugs are back and I forgot to bring the bloody flex tar with me to get rid of the friggin' mozzies. Um, right, so we've got the, 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 the tripod set up, we've got the composition the way we want it to be. But what we're going to do first is the night mode photo. I'm just going to turn this light off, hit, uh, I'll record the screen so you can see what I'm doing here. I'm going to use the one torch here um, and, and, and that's, that's it. Um, there's a few things that we'll probably encounter here. If you've done light painting of vehicles before, you've probably seen this before, and I'll show you different ways to get around. I'm talking about big dark areas around the back of the vehicle. So I'll turn this light off. Now, I'm just gonna hit the arrow so we get the full 30 seconds. Hit the night mode button, bring it all. Because we're on a tripod, it's going to give us the 30 seconds. I'll hit the start button. I'll move over this side and I'll shine the light down the side of the vehicle. 
Now we never, never want to shine the light directly from above or behind the camera that we're actually taking the photo on. So this is the first, first pass of the image. I don't think this is going to be a good image, but we'll see how it goes. Nearly done. All right, <laughs> to be honest, that looks pretty sensational. However, there's a couple of things I really don't like about this. See that big black area to the side and behind the vehicle? That's kind of not cool. And you can see it's also blown out the, the light on the front of the vehicle. Because it's a white vehicle, it's actually quite hard to do this. So I'm going to broaden the beam of the light first. We're just going to get the vehicle right first. We'll deal with the the back of the vehicle and the background of the photo in just a second. So I was going to shine that light really broad but very wide so it's not so pencil beam. Walk around the other side so the front of the vehicle now and do the same thing. Once I know this is right then we'll deal with the background. All right, nearly done, there it is. Let's have a look at it. That looks a lot better on the vehicle itself. Actually, it looks bloody sensational. So the vehicle is right. Now what we're going to do is deal with the background. Let's just check something. We're not shooting Pro Raw. I'm gonna shoot Pro Raw, it's something I should have said before. And we're gonna take that photo again. So the vehicle itself will be fine. We'll do the same thing, broad like that. Now I'm going to hit the pencil beam right out and paint the back of the, the background there. All the stuff that was in the, the background before, we want that lit up. So I'll come around this side of the vehicle, left hand side, shine the light out behind, open it up to the big broad beam for the vehicle, a little bit in front, and that'll probably do. Let's see how we look. <laughs> that looks Bloody sensational. Absolutely sensational. All right, that first photo, I think we've nailed that. The external of the vehicle, the background of the vehicle looks pretty good. What I'm not happy with, and I think this is, we're at the point now where it's got a good photo. We've got a good photo. Let's make it to be a great photo. I'm going to put some light inside the vehicle. I'm going to use one of these lights. This is just an RGB LED light. It's got a diffuser on it. The diffuser is quite important uh, because without the diffuser, this is going to be a pretty harsh light. And we want to diffuse it for a long time. Uh, we want to diffuse it because the light will be on for the whole duration of the photo. Now, if you've got a light source and it doesn't have to be one of these, get yourself some baking paper, you know, like wax paper and put that over the light, that'll diffuse it. And if it's not diffused enough, if you've got a light that doesn't adjust like this one does, it'll go down in percentages, this one. But if you don't have one like this, use some of that parchment paper or wax paper or baking paper, whatever you call it from wherever you are, and put it over the, over the, over the light, turn the light on, take a photo. If it's too bright, fold the paper in half so it's double the thickness and do it again. If it's still too bright, double it again, and double it again, double it again. You don't have to spend a lot of money to take this sort of photo. So anyway, we're gonna put this on, I'm gonna put it down low, put it inside the vehicle, and we'll take the photo again. Too bright inside the vehicle, but you can see where we're heading here. Two things I don't like about this photo. One, it's just too bright inside the car, and I've got that at about 50%, so I need to bring it right down. I'll probably bring it down to about 10%, and we'll try it again. The other thing is bloody purple, and that just doesn't work for the photo, so we need to change that to, I don't know, we'll have a bit of a play. We'll try different light, light colours and see what we can come up with. This one is a little bit too bright as well. I've got that on 10%. I have to bring it even further down. Don't mind the green colour, but I'll desaturate that just a little bit so it's just got a green tinge to it. With this particular light, I can go um, sat out the, the hue colour, the saturation of that colour and the intensity. Um, so we'll bring the intensity down a little bit, bring the saturation down a little bit and we'll do it again. So far, you can see where my head's at trying to get this photo just right. Okay, that's sitting at 5%. We'll take another photo. Now that, ladies and gentlemen, is exactly what I was trying to get. Straight out of the camera, native camera app, night mode, different light painting techniques, different angles, and it has worked superbly. 
Let's have a look at the edit of this and see how good we can actually make this. Here is the photo in Lightroom. No point putting, uh, hitting the auto button. We're going to go into light first and we're going to decrease the highlights. All of this, little, little bits, not too much. Now uh, the shadows, we will try and have a play with that. Sometimes it works well. It works better with DSLR than it does with, certainly with the iPhone. So we'll bring the shadows up and bring the blacks up and bring the whites down a little bit. Touch it and hold it, see what it looks like before and after. I think it looks pretty good. Uh, where are we going to go from now? It looks a little bit warm for my liking. I'll decrease the temperature a little bit. Increase the magenta cast through the photo. <laughs> that looks pretty bloody good. This came out of a phone for crying out loud. All right, we'll go over to effects. And with the iPhone, if you haven't watched this channel before, the, the haze through the photo in a night mode photo with Astro is pretty bloody horrid. So we're gonna use that and see what's doing to the sky there behind us. Right there is probably the sweet spot, about 10 to 15, somewhere between there. Um, over to details, we're gonna to go to noise reduction because there's always a bit of noise with an iPhone photo. If we look closely at the car, you're gonna see a fair bit of noise there. But that looks pretty damn good. What I might do is add a little bit of a vignette. Only a little bit, very, very little bit. I've gotta tell you, that is as good to go on my wall right up there next to that drawing. Very, very happy with that. Love the truck, love the photo. See you next time.